So the birth of Moses takes us into this next series that we engage in uh, called the water series. And today we talked about into the water, what God loves he puts into the water. Uh, Moses is our first character that we see emerging in this series. Um, the thing about uh, Moses' story that really kind of strikes me is, is the vulnerability of it, of a little boy, uh, three months old, approximately being put into a papyrus basket that's made watertight and floated out into the Nile River that is full of crocodiles and hippos and Egyptians and all these things. And we recognize that there is this, this thing going on in there that says, this isn't how it's supposed to be. This new mother should be excited for her son's future and life, but the, but she's not. She's floating out into the Nile. This It shouldn't be this way. And we ask the question, what's going on? There's cultural reasons for it, for sure. What's going on is the Egyptians are afraid that the Hebrews are too numerous and would turn on them. But this genocide against the people of God where they had to throw their baby boys that are born into the Nile on royal decree from Pharaoh, really tells us that um, the narrative is shifting at this point. And we see a theme in scripture emerge that what God loves, he puts into the waters. And Moses is really the first story of one of those going into the water. He, of course, his life is saved by an Egyptian princess who um, raises him in her home. And we see Moses uh, saved and redeemed out of the waters. But we have to ask the question, um, what happens when we are looking at life and the waters of our life? Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's cancer. Maybe it's illness. Maybe it's the loss of a loved one. Maybe it's a divorce, a lost marriage, a failed marriage. Maybe it's just a sense of being inadequate. Uh, maybe it's infertility. I don't know all the, all the different places where you um, struggle. I know my waters. I can name my waters. And it's hard when you look at the chaotic, uncontrollable, powerful things of life. But uh, where I look at it and go, this isn't how it was supposed to be. But then we kind of pivot ourselves and ask the question, is this exactly where God had us? Is this where God had us? Is this part of God's plan? Is God still redeeming brokenness in the darkness of this life and doing it for the glory of Jesus Christ? It's not some macabre thing where we're just going, yeah, God's, you know, taking over and making all things new. No, no, God's participating with us in a broken world that is broken by sin and he's still redeeming out of that darkness. He's still working it out. So we understand for us that we must name the waters. We must name the chaos in our life, but we also you know, I, I think naming it matters because we're naming the things that make us throw our hands up and go, this isn't the way it was supposed to be. And, um, and we recognize there's things that threaten what we love the most. For Moses' mom, it was the waters. For us, our waters may be different, and I want you to lean in on that and be really honest in your discussion, but also ask the question, what if? What if God knows better? What if God sees bigger? What if God has a plan that can still redeem such brokenness? That's the challenge of this message, not just to name your waters, but then to recognize he's still Lord over them. He is still God over the waters. He's still the Lord Jesus Christ who spoke to the wind and the waves, peace, be still. I hope that peace and that stillness rests on you guys as you turn towards us and uh, maybe answer some questions as a group and wrestle with this as a small group. What does it mean to be put into the waters? So let me ask you this. How was your last week? If I can be super honest for a minute, mine was super lame. Uh, this is one of those weeks where if it was a something I could punch, I would hit it. It was not a good week. Um, had to put my dog shadow down. Always makes for a kind of crappy week. So yeah, and there's a number of other things where Erica and I feel like we've been put into the waters. So when you talk about this, be honest. Because when I say, how was your last week? It's okay to say, mine was pretty lame. It doesn't mean I've given up on this life. But um, what I would like to do is to have you share with your group the high, the best part of last week, and the low. No matter how low it gets, please share your high and low from last week. Question two, how long do you think it was before the Egyptians started to fear the Israelites and forget all about the, all about like all the things Joseph had done for them? How long do you think it was before that fear set in?
So it is really not possible for you and I to understand what Moses' parents went through in this. We don't understand what it would like to be enslaved, oppressed, and a people living under kind of this heavy weighted government. Um, but can you imagine the fear? Can you imagine um, how Jacobed, his mom, uh, felt? And can, well, maybe this is a question. Do you ever think that Jacobed, his mom, wished she hadn't got pregnant? If you had a chance to do the devotions this week, then you know that putting a baby in a basket in a basket boat um, wasn't an altogether new idea. Whether Jochebed was inspired by the stories that she had heard or not, God had a plan to save Moses, and um, He supplied her with the courage to obey. Have you ever felt led by the Holy Spirit to do something that seemed absolutely crazy? Talk about it with your group. Question five, so the Nile River would have been a death sentence to little Hebrew boys at this time. This body of water was supposed, was supposed to destroy little Moses. I can't imagine it was a source of great fear to the Israelite families. What is the water in your life today? What is the Nile? What is the water in your life today? What is the source of great fear that is threatening you? Maybe threatening your family and your friends. So question six, one of the hardest times in my life um, that I had was actually one of the sweetest times I've ever had in terms of my relationship with the Lord. When, when I look back on that, I mean, I was so alone. I was so, I think, just sad. I felt this constant, like, heartache. And um, I remember realizing one night um, that Jesus Christ was all I really had. He was all I had. It was all I was holding on to. I held on to scripture like it was the breath in my lungs. And um, in a very strange way, I don't want to go back to that time, but in a very strange way, I'm so thankful that I had that time with God, that time with Christ where I became dependent on him and I'm not self-sufficient because I know what the end of my strength looks like and I know what the hope and the grace of Christ in that moment feels like. And I'm so thankful for that time. How about you? Do you believe that God, see, God sees beyond your current circumstances right now? That he knows what you truly need and has your best interest at heart? I can imagine that small group this week might have included some tears um, for the group of talking about these things. I hope it included laughter and tears kind of the sweet and the spicy and the salty of life, right? This great combination where we feel scrubbed clean when we're done with the conversation because in those elements of being honest and real and vulnerable, we're also known, the facade goes away, and we have the opportunity to be loved as very broken people. Um, I don't know where you're at in terms of the water, but I know this, if you're not in it, you will be. And if you are in it, you'll come out soon. The Lord always has a way of putting rhythms into our life that help us not only survive the waters, but as Christians, we believe that we can deepen our walk with him and then become a profound sense, no, not a sense, a profound presence of redemption amid the brokenness in this world. But the only way to be a force for redemption is to you yourself first need it to be redeemed from bad circumstances. My hope and prayer for you as a group is that you experience the redemption of Christ. And this first talk we had, first conversation you had of being someone who God loves as proven by being put into the water. Grace and peace.